Let's pop this bad boy into a drill and I'll show you how crazy it is. You don't want to mess with that. Today we're going to do another Kawasaki X2 update. I'm going to bring you guys up to speed on what's going on with the project. So let's get into it. There will be video footage throughout this video. Uh, a lot of it will also be photos of the project that I took along the way. As I do with most of my projects, I kind of jumped back and forth a little bit. Here we have one of the tabs that you use to remove the cylinder from the base. Somebody damaged it. They often get damaged, but I took extreme measures. I decided to put it in my milling machine and just cut them off. And then I decided to mill some other stuff off. So here we've got photos of me milling down the torque specifications. I ended up putting the cylinders back on to check some stuff and thought that I might have had a twisted crank or a bent rod. So if you take a close look at this photo, you will see I'm pushing the piston all the way down and there is about two millimeters of piston showing on the top. But looking at this one, there is about three millimeters, maybe a little bit more. I had mentioned in the last update video that the port timing was off by about a millimeter. It was actually closer to two millimeters. But uh, this is a direct result of that and the pieces of the puzzle kind of came together a little bit. What is happening is the sleeves were actually cast in place about two millimeters off from one another. I'm not sure why the camera doesn't pick it up, but the lighter spot to the center and then left side is quite a bit lower than the rest of it. I actually have to remove probably close to a millimeter from the top of the transfer. See if I can stick the screwdriver in there and show you just, no, you kind of see. In my last video, I showed how with a bit of creativity, you can make some excellent porting tools. Here I made another one for my 90 degree porting tool to get into the transfer ports. And here is the tool beside a slightly longer one that I made. And all it is, is a piece of old round file. On the smaller one, I heated up red hot to anneal it so that I could turn down the shoulder of it and then uh, heat treat it again and uh, it worked really really well. As I said I do kind of jump all over the place. I went back to working on the exhaust ports. Despite my best efforts I couldn't get it perfect. You can see there is still a bit of a void and the reason that I have to leave this is because I don't want to raise the port height too much uh, because that's going to change the port timing drastically. So I'm going to have to leave that little imperfection there. This is a West Coast Performance Exhaust Manifold. And even though it's a performance part, you can see there are some casting marks in it. I then moved on to the next part of the exhaust. And here you can see it is quite rough as well, even though it is a performance part. Quite rough and lots of casting imperfections. And this is what it looks like now after going at it for several hours with a carbide burr, sandpaper, drums, and a homemade tool, which I will show you right now. I'm not really sure what to call this contraption. I've never seen anything like it. I came up with the idea on my own and uh, yeah, it works really well. I would like to make another version of it that uh, was a little bit more refined, but it definitely does the job. Basically what you're looking at is a piece of half inch bar. I turned the end of it down to three eighths. I welded a washer onto the end of it. I then drilled a hole on each side of the washer so that I could attach a bicycle chain. So I used a chain brake tool to push the pins out and then push the pins back in. On the other end, I took these sanding drums, I removed the pin from the bicycle chain, and I pushed through the shank 
on the sanding drum and then welded it on the back side just with a little spot of weld. Let's pop this bad boy into a drill and I'll show you how crazy it is. You don't want to mess with that. So what you can do with this tool that you can't do with others is turn somewhat uneven shapes. Uh, this has a seam on the inside of it, or a casting seam that I wanted to get rid of. This is basically how this works. I used a blowtorch to heat up the powder coat enough so that I could scrape it off quite easily. And then I got a little bit carried away and I started sanding down the outside of the exhaust because it was quite rough and had a lot of casting marks. And this is one final photo of that part with the paint removed and with it all polished up. As some of you may know, the Kawasaki X2 has a drain so that you can drain water out of the cases if you sink it. These can be problematic as they sometimes leak and can cause engine failure or just uh, tuning issues. So I decided to pop mine in the mill, trim some of it down, drill the hole out to size so that I could then thread the holes for a 12 by 1.25. I didn't actually thread these holes with the intention of putting bolts in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is fill the holes with JB Weld. It's a more permanent solution and it's a lot easier to shape. And with the magic of movie editing, it's now hard and we've started to sand it down. I decided to do some sandblasting and here is a photo of the results of that, but I don't actually have a sandblasting booth so I made this. I also didn't have an air compressor that was good enough to run a sandblaster, so if you look in the description of this video you will see a link to a video where I made an air compressor and it is kind of ridiculous. Moving our way back the exhaust we have the expansion chamber. And here is a shot of the inside of it after several applications of brake clean and wiping it down. Here is after a little bit of work. I believe that it was at this time that I decided that the seam wasn't going to get sanded out. So I was going to have to use my homemade flat screwdriver curving tool to remove it. It's a little bit fiddly and time consuming but it actually works pretty good. Here's one last shot of the exhaust ports to show you guys how shiny they turned out. And I do believe in my next video, it is going to be powder coating. So there have been a couple of shots in my videos where you can see in the background what colors I'm going to be using for my powder coating. And if you haven't seen that, then in the next video you will find out what the color scheme is going to be for my jet ski. Anyway, that does it for this update. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, so I'm downstairs. I have the hatch closed so we can get a realistic idea of what it's gonna sound like down here. I've got my stopwatch ready and I'm about to turn on the um, breaker. As you can see, not very loud at all. I'm talking at a normal voice, or my normal voice anyway. And uh, the compressor is uh, over in that corner. Oh, that was the drain draining. That was quite quiet.
There we go.